Okay, today we have four speakers for you. We're going to start off with Pamela Welsenbeck, who is a compliance manager at the University of Maryland Global Campus, followed by Donna Von Paris, who is a contract administrator at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Then we will move on to Jocelyn Johnson, who is a procurement director at Towson University. And last but not least, we will have Roland Jones, who is a director of strategic sourcing at the University of Maryland College Park. As I said earlier, please do type out your questions in the chat box on your screen. I know it's difficult for us to network these days, so this is as close as we can get to it. We do offer live transcription for our deaf and hard of hearing community. So if you would like me to turn this feature on, please do request it in the chat box. A copy of the slide deck will be emailed to you after the presentation. And as I said before, the webinar is being recorded and the replay will be available on the PTAC website and YouTube channel, probably sometime tomorrow. A little bit about the Maryland PTAC. It's our mission to help Maryland-based businesses fully compete in federal, state, and local government procurement processes. We offer individualized counseling and group training, and our services are free and confidential. If you would like to speak with a counselor, please go to our website, mdptac.org, and register today. If you have been counseled before, and you need further advice, please email your counsellor to request another meeting. Okay, wonderful. All right, so we will start with our first speaker, who's Pamela Welsenbach. Good morning, Pamela, if you would like to share your screen, please. Good morning, everybody. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can see it and we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Great, thank you. I am I'm going to apologize in advance. I have rescued a kitten and she is very vocal. So that is definitely something that you don't get when we're doing these in person um, in a, an auditorium or uh, some kind of a, a meeting hall. So on behalf of University of Maryland Global Campus and the 90,000 students we serve each year, welcome. My name is Pam Welsenbach and I am Compliance Manager and MBE and SBR Liaison at UMGC. For anyone not familiar with our university, let me offer some background. We were formerly known as University of Maryland University College but in July 2019, our name was changed, excuse me, our name was changed to University of Maryland Global Campus, a name that better communicates our unique role to modern audiences. That role has remained unchanged for more than 70 years. We were founded in 1947, specifically to serve the needs of adult students in the workforce and the US military, for whom a traditional education was impractical or impossible. And that mission guides us to this day. Stateside, some 94% of our enrollments are online. And through contracts with the Department of Defense, we send faculty around the world to offer face-to-face -face instruction at military installations in more than 20 different countries and territories. That coupled with the fact that we are guided by state procurement laws, makes procurement at UMGC varied, challenging, and never dull. It presents opportunities for small businesses, like many of you here today, who truly understand our mission. Since UMGC operates primarily online, our needs are significantly different from those of more traditional brick and mortar universities. We have very few physical classrooms and no dormitories, dining halls, or athletic facilities all areas of operation where other schools often retain services of multiple vendors for construction activity or related services, supplies, and equipment. And unlike our sister USM institutions, UMGC has fewer opportunities for construction or construction related operations.
UMGC does, however, have small business procurement opportunities in the goods and services area. We have small procurement opportunities for promotional items such as general UMGC logo items and items for specific events, photography for commencements and specific events, flowers for commencements and specific events, entertainment such as homecoming DJs and photo booths, miscellaneous printing services, general and specific events, signage, transcription and closed captioning services, and catering. How do you do business with UMGC? Well, everything under $5,000 $5, and under falls under the UMGC purchasing card. $5,001 to $25,000 you would send your one page capability statement to me, pamela.wellsenbach at umgc.edu for opportunities from in this range. And I will provide your capability statement to procurement officers whenever an opportunity arises that matches your services. In the $25,001 to $200,000 range, please check the UMGC procurement website, umgc.edu slash business hyphen partners slash procurement for solicitation opportunities. Over $200,000, again, check the UMGC procurement website for requests for proposal opportunities. Suggested best practices. If you are submitting a proposal or offer in response to an RFP, please make sure you read the instructions set forth within the RFP. Proposals that concisely present the information requested in the order and manner requested will be considered more favorably than a proposal offer of commensurate qualifications that displays a lack of organization, conciseness, or attention to detail. But the decision for progressing in the procurement process will be made based on the strengths, weaknesses, advantages, and deficiencies that the technical proposals represent. Proposals are strongly, proposers are strongly encouraged to take advantage of the period for vendors to ask questions. Questions must be submitted in writing by email and all potential proposers questions are anonymized when the answers are issued. For certain RFPs, UMGC may choose to hold pre-proposal conferences, either virtually or in person. In such cases, Vendors are encouraged in order to attend in order to ask questions. And finally, here's my contact information. And you will have this available in the slide deck when you receive it from Yasmin. And I would like to add that as a state institution, UMGC is proud to participate in the State Minority Business Enterprise or MBE program, as well as the State Small Business Reserve or SBR program. We hope that you will consider joining these programs if you have not already done so. The MBE program has certain qualifications that must be met and the application process is indeed extensive, but this is a great program and the effort is worthwhile. Current MBE regulations direct state agencies to make every effort to award an overall minimum goal of 29% of the total, do, total dollar value of their procurement contracts directly through certified MBE prime contractors or indirectly through certified MBE subcontractors. And then under the SBR program, state agencies are required to reserve 15% of total procurements each year for competition exclusively among Maryland certified small business enterprises. The SBR program is a free online self-certification process that is easy to complete. You attest to meeting the eligibility standards and you must recertify annually. But overall, it's a simple and easy way to make your firm available for SBR designated procurements 
that have been set aside exclusively for firms who have been certified in eMaryland Marketplace Advantage as a small business reserve firm. Only SBR firms can be awarded an SBR designated contract. These procurements will be noted as such on the UMGC procurement website. Both the MBE and SBR programs offer opportunities for entrepreneurs here today, and I hope you will give serious thought to considering them. Please don't hesitate to reach out, and if I can be of any assistance, I will try to help you as best I can. So again, on behalf of our university, welcome to so many who represent the backbone of Maryland's small business community. I hope you all have a most informative and productive day today, and I thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Thank you, Pamela, that was wonderful. Uh, yeah, we do have a question. Um, any suggestions for getting feedback regarding our MBE application? It was accepted in June and I have not been able to get uh, a progress update on that. How long does it usually take? Um, well, that goes through MDOT, which is um, the agency who handles the MBE um, application process. Um, I really don't know if there's a set limit to the, you know, as a general time limit that they give. Um, I know it can take quite some time. <laughs> um, if they did not, if you have a person that you have been talking to, I would suggest that you call them and see if you can get an update. Um, you may although also call GASBA and that's the governor's office of small minority and women's business affairs and see if they can't help you um, get an update. Um, okay. Do we have um, Gosba's email or phone number available, Yasmin? I can, I'll find it and post it in the chat box. Thank you for that. And also just a reminder that your PTAC counselor can help you push these things along as well. They have okay. contacts too. Okay. Um, I, I can probably come up with um, their phone, uh, Gosba's phone number as well as their okay. um, Great. website address. And I'll put it in the chat box. All right. Wonderful. A mm -hmm. um, couple of more questions. One is for me, is a slide deck going to be shared? Yes. All the slide decks will be emailed to you as soon as the webinar concludes. And this is being recorded and it will be on the PTAC YouTube channel from tomorrow. Pamela, does UMGC need emergency management type services? Emergency management, um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. We do have a um, management um, agreement in place um, that covers um, all of our janitorial um, maintenance, um, uh, basically a lot of landscaping. Um, we have something already in place that um, is a multi-year contract, um, but that maintenance type agreement has been in place for quite some time. Um, and there are various vendor, there are various subcontractors who work for a prime contractor under that. Um, if, if that's what you mean, um, you know, I don't know what kind of management you're talking about. Okay, if the person would like to elaborate, otherwise there's a couple of more questions because I know Pamela does have to go. Um, she has an urgent matter to deal with. And any questions that don't get answered, please feel free to email them to me directly and I will share them with Pamela. So this one is, if I have a software tool or product to present to UMGC, is there a way to present it? Um, yes, if you have um, a capability statement and can provide that to me, even if um, you're looking for work, you know, or if you're interested in anything, even if it's over the $50,000 um, limit, if it's, uh, you know, even higher, um, provide me with a capability statement because I can pass that on to the procurement officers who handle those types of purchases. I am not a, I, I do not purchase. <laughs> I strictly handle the MBE and SBR information. I do a lot of other things as a compliance manager, but I do not actually purchase. So 
but I do make sure that all of the purchasing officers get the right information they need as far as MBEs and SBRs, making sure they get information about firms um, in those categories who are MBEs and SBRs. I also you know, pass along information that I receive, um, all type, you know, types of capability statements. I pass along information to those procurement officers when they are uh, preparing solicitations or RFPs so that they can make sure that they um, include those people um, in um, their RFP or solicitation when they send out the information or send out the, um, the documents. So um, yeah, send me your capability statement and I can keep that on file and I will make sure that you know, the people in our, if you're talking about software, I will make sure that our IT director um, gets that information. Okay, thank you, Pamela, so much for that information. I know you do have to leave, so I do appreciate you taking the time today. There are some questions, follow-up questions that we haven't had time to get to. So if those people would like to email me directly, just respond to the invitation to this webinar, and I will forward them to Pamela, and she will help you get those answered. Thanks, Pamela. You can stop sharing your screen. Okay, thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go on to our next presenter, who is Donna Von Paris. She is a contract administrator at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Hello, Donna. Good morning, everybody. Give me one second. Sure. Okay, we can see your presentation. Just need to put it, go from the beginning and slideshow mode over to the left. There we go. Okay. Sorry, Thanks. this is my first Zoom. You're doing great, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, good morning. Welcome to UMBC. We were established in 1966. We're a fairly new campus. We celebrated our 50th year just recently. It was a big gala on campus. It's a great place to work. Um, I wanted to more or less go into a lot of detail how you can do business throughout all the procurement offices in the state of Maryland. I kind of made it general with, and also with UMBC. Doing business with the university, the procurement uh, department oversees the acquisition of all goods, services, equipment, and construction by the university. And when we do purchases, all services and the prices paid by the university shall reflect comp competitive pricing result in the lowest reasonable cost my compute Hold on. with uh, the due consideration being made for quality and the service re record of the vendor and the best interest to the university. Um, when it's a solicitation, uh, there's the evaluation and I will get into that later. If you have any questions, please contact the procurement office for assistance in reaching the proper party, or you can go to the websites for the product or service you wish to offer to the university. The policies and procedures of the university require that the purchases be made through established contracts, which are coordinated by the uh, procurement office. If you get a solicitation and it's for a contract, I highly recommend to at least uh, do some type of response because so, some contracts can go for as long as three to five years, and you can. it's a good way of building a relationship with a campus. So on our campus, um, sales on individual departments are not permitted unless requested by a department. So sometimes they'll call us up. I send them to uh, the SBR or the um, MBE site. I said, look for some vendors there, or I... I cannot recommend any one vendor for the procurement office. We have to give a, a series of companies and I highly recommend that you get back to them in a timely fashion. I would say that's the number one mistake that I hear from a lot of um, end users that people didn't get back to them. And um, you, you have to realize if they call you and you come on campus, that doesn't guarantee a sale. It might be for information only. Um, they're 
trying to gather information and um, the departments and the employees are not authorized to enter into any contracts or purchases with suppliers without prior approval and authorization of the procurement. If you ask them to sign something, they are not allowed to sign it. It's only an officer in the procurement department that is allowed to sign. I've also, I know um, that Pamela went through this, but these are the websites for um, Emma, which is uh, for, um, I highly recommend that you register with Emma. It's the email and marketplace advantage because this is actually to do business with the university and all other agencies in the state of Maryland. Um, it's free, it takes a couple minutes and you do all the codes that actually are associated with your type of business and you will get solicitations making you aware of uh, purchasing opportunities uh, within Maryland. Um, there's also um, in the university system, we all, can, we all have bid boards. The UMBC bid board can be found at the um, website. I know that all the, all the other campuses also have bid boards. Highly recommend that you go to these bid boards periodically and you check them out. And if they have one um, site visit, a pre-bid meeting or a uh, I highly recommend going to it to get information, get your name out to the community. And you can always be a subcontractor. Sometimes there's MBE and SBR goals that we want to meet. And um, a company might be looking, be looking for a partner. Um, you can find out a lot of information and you can, it's a good way of meeting people that some of the people already have um, associations with the university system. And um, I, oh, soliciting, so, okay. Purchase orders. Purchase orders, if a purchase is under $5,000, it can be paid with your P card. And with the P card, um, the, unless it needs something needs to be signed, once again, it has to be signed by procurement. But if you take the P card, I highly recommend it. It's a good way of starting. You know, somebody, if you're in office supplies, they might want to buy some paper. Um, go ahead and sell it to them. They'll put it on their P card. And I recommend that you deliver it and yourself and introduce yourself because your reputation and um, your name, getting it out there. It's a lot of um, communication within the campuses. If they like a vendor, they'll say, hey, try company ABC. They really gave good service and it's a good start. There's also um, the bidding process in according, accordance to the uh, University System of Maryland. We have to follow the procurement policies and procedures UMBC conducts an open competitive bidding process, depending on the dollar value of the order. The bidding process may take up, may be taken by phone quotations, written bids, or, comp, um, or RFP. If we ask you for a quote, it's due by a certain day, make sure you get back to them. Even if you cannot provide the service, just email and say, we can't provide this at this time and at least they know you're interested in doing the business. And I believe Pamela went through the thresholds of the dollar amounts already. And um, be awarded a purchase order for goods and services from UMBC. There's a bidding procedure and the, um, it is, must be the lowest responsive, responsible bid or meeting the specifications as required. And if it's RFP, it's done when the, um, technical and the price, not just the a price. Um, we, look at, we look at, hey, can they really provide this item? What's their capability? We check references and make sure you provide, if you're asked for references, make sure you provide references that um, can be, can, um, actually contact them and let them know that you gave them name, that, gave their name as a reference. And the reason why is um, 
many times we call up for references and the person no longer works there and it's not updated information. And um, we, we have to go over and beyond trying to find out where this person now is to uh, get a reference. And if you get uh, selected to receive RFP, the, the vendor is responsible for completing the proposal form and returning it to procurement. Following the instructions given in the proposal, make sure you pay attention to the due date and the time. Late or improper deliver of proposals will not be considered. I always say it's like catching a plane. If you miss the plane taken off, that was your one opportunity and you have to make other arrangements. In this case, it, um, we look at these dates very seriously. This is the minority and small business. Once again, this is um, to register as an MBE. It's a little bit of, it's, uh, it takes some time to do uh, the MBE portion, but be patient. It's definitely worth it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always contact uh, MDOT and they will be glad to help you. And small business, once again, um, I highly recommend that you register. It only takes probably less than 15 minutes to um, fill out the form and it, you have to do it yearly. And I highly recommend doing this. Uh, Pamela already brought up the procurements and the th dollar thresholds. Um, and these are a repeat of what um, Pamela had said. This is the simple, the types of procurements that UMBC does and the university system. They're simplified, competitive sealed bid, competitive sealed multi-step, which means we might look at uh, a portion of it and we'll say, yes, they, they've passed the half of it. So then we will ask for a price. Um, you, then they'll ask for a price. Qualify, qualifications based on um, selection. And this is a scoring and we're able to, um, and ranked, and then we uh, can negotiate the price. And a cooperative agreement negotiate, we negotiate uh, with a firm based on the NBC scope and cooperative agreement terms. If I go too fast, now the solicitation. Now, now that you have the solicitation, I highly recommend that you pay attention to the following. Pre-proposal meeting site visit. Highly recommend you get a better on-site look at what we're actually looking for. If it's, um, if it's whatever it is, if it's an AV system, you get to look at the room, take measurements and get a feel of what is going on. And, from those meetings, sometimes the um, scope of work may change. You, people bring up things that we didn't think of, and we, we I just highly recommend that you show up for them. Due dates for questions, I highly recommend. If you're not sure, send the email, ask a question. A question can help or break you, especially if you're new at this, and we don't mind walking you through it. Responses should be in the order that is stated in the solicitation. It just makes it cleaner. And the due date of the solicitation. Once again, a late uh, solicitation is not acceptable. And thank you. If you have any questions, um, I gave you the procurement uh, UMBC website. If you need, uh, if you buy software, it has a breakdown of the people responsible in our procurement office uh, for the different um, commodities. So do you have any questions? And thank you. Thank you, Donna. That was very thorough. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, first one is, um, I have searched the University of Maryland websites mm -hmm. and emailed our capability statements to several people, but I've never received a response. Is there a proper is there a list of people to contact or departments to contact? What's the best way for a vendor to navigate who to get in touch with? The best, you know, um, first of all, register with the SBR and MBE. Second of all, if it is, you know, 
as we all know, some people just don't respond to emails. And I mean, no matter what, and I try to always uh, respond back and say, you know, thank you, or, you know, I keep a, a mental note, I keep a file on, um, for example, I handle the, the athletics and there was bus services. And for a while there, I was getting small bus um, companies calling me and we used them for other services, not the athletic teams, but um, everybody operates a little bit different. But I know that the best thing to do is um, keep your eyes open and check the bid boards and uh, register with Emma and follow through is the most important thing. Okay, now I'm getting a question that I've had from the beginning, so it probably applies to everybody on this, on to all the uh, universities. Do you buy um, face masks? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm only laughing because at the beginning of COVID, we couldn't find any, and now everybody has them. So um, there, you know, we buy them. Um, I don't, I have not been the purchase. Uh, I bought some at the very beginning, but I, I know we have a medical facility here on campus and people are responsible for their own. Um, our mascot has one, I'm, somebody I'm sure put that on him. So um, it, you just have to, you know, if you know somebody on the campus, you know, come and ask them. Because departments buy those and they're under $5,000. So I don't see a lot of that coming across my desk. Okay. A uh, couple of other questions. What about um, career services and cyber needs? Do you have any cyber needs? I don't handle cyber needs. Um, they are done through our do it. And there's another buyer um, that handles that in our department. Would you? Would it be possible for you to post their contact or at least the, the web page in the chat box? I uh, yeah. Do you, do you, okay, great. Because I think people just want to know who do. Where do we go to read further on that? And you know, maybe be get a contact for that. Okay, great. All right. Well, um, I think I lost. Donna. Yes, yeah. I'm here. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so thank you so much. Um, if there are any other further questions for Donna, please feel free to email them to me directly. Or also, we may have time at the end of the webinar to do some more Q&A. So thank you for that. Um, could you, um, Anshit, there you go. Wonderful. And now we're going to move on to Jocelyn Johnson, who is the new procurement director at Towson University. Welcome, Jocelyn. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. I appreciate uh, the opportunity, Yasmin. Thank you so much. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, all right. So I am again, Jocelyn Johnson. I am the new procurement director here at Towson University. I've been here for a uh, extended seven days, um, just a week. And um, I was the previous procurement director at the University of Baltimore. And I was also the associate director procurement director for the University of Maryland, Baltimore. So I have a total of about 25 uh, years of procurement experience on the federal, state, local, and higher, le uh, higher ed levels. So I do understand the importance of meeting and partnering and outreaching um, with small and minority businesses. Uh, Pam and um, Donna stole a lot of my thunder. Um, so my presentation is gonna be pretty short and sweet. But just to give you a background of Towson University, um, it is actually the largest university in the Baltimore area and the second largest of the 12 institutions that make up the university system of Maryland. Uh, we were ranked one of the America's top 100 universities. Uh, student body is 22,923 students. Um, that makes up uh, undergrad of about 19,000 and graduate students at 3,105. Um, this just pretty much lists our, um, our footprint. Uh, it consists of 6 million square feet of space and 57 buildings and 329 acres. Um, our campus master plan was completed in 2015 and is currently being updated in collaboration with Air St. Rose. 
So we've got new building additions, um, as I'm sure all the uh, uh, institutions within USM are going through some sort of a transformation. Um, our science complex opened in summer of 2021. Um, our union expanded phase two is uh, slated to be completed in fall of 2022. And our College of Health Professionals building um, is slated to open in the summer of 2024. Um, so at Towson University, we spend approximately um, $62 million uh, annually. 15% um, of those contract dollars are awarded to small businesses. 16% are awarded to minority businesses and um, 6 million of that 62 million are done in purchasing card spend. So um, Pam and Donna pretty much um, went over that. Any purchase under 5,000 or less um, is done on the purchasing card. So there are a lot of opportunities um, for small businesses and minority businesses to get in there and, and get that business. Okay, where to locate the opportunity. So Donna and Pam stole my thunder on that. The most important thing um, is to make sure that you are registered on eMaryland Marketplace. If no place else, Emma uh, is definitely the place that you want to start first. Before you try to get um, an MBE certification, before you try to do anything, make sure you register on eMaryland Marketplace because all of our opportunities, all of the 12 USM institutions, as well as all of the state agencies, um, and some of the uh, local school districts, I know Baltimore City Public School, Baltimore County, they're all using... Um, Emma. So if you're looking for any opportunities, you want to start there. You also want to make sure that you're registered as a small business if you qualify, um, because those procurements that are set aside specifically for small businesses, they will go directly to you. You will get a notification if you are registered as a small business. So that is critical above anything else. If you're not registered today, as soon as we get off this call, go on to uh, email and marketplace advantage and register right away. And if you're a small business, make sure that you register right away on that. Um, here is uh, Towson University's procurement webpage. So um, that this is our, um, our bid board. So we make sure that anything over 25,000 that we're posting on email and Marketplace Advantage, as well as the university's webpage. Um, so each of the institutions will have their own individual one. But um, again, it's important that you're registered on Emma because we'll post there as well as um, our, our webpage. It has a lot of information, uh, contact information, um, you know, who you need to talk to regarding a specific widget or a service. Um, all the information is there. Um, and then also the governor's office, a small minority and uh, women webpage. Um, it's important to go there as well because every state agency and every USM institution is required annu annually to post our procurement forecast. So that will detail a list of procurements that we anticipate for the next fiscal year. So from July 1st through June um, 30th, um, that's um, considered our fiscal year and we're required by law to post um, or to provide a list of those opportunities. So you can look, um, you can search by agency, you can search by the uh, good or service, you can search by the dollar amount. Um, all of that is listed on, um, on their webpage. So these three things are critical um, for you to you know, be aware and get savvy with and become familiar with because those are where your opportunities um, are actually going to be. Okay, so again, mine's short and sweet. I've, I've been here seven days, so they didn't give me much time to prepare. Um, but again, Pam and Donna pretty much um, took care of the things that um, I didn't in my, in my presentation. But if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Thank you, Jocelyn. Um, that was great. Short and sweet, but full of great information. And I'd like to think that we're the first to have you do a webinar in this position. Am I right? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, well that's a great you. list. Threw me to the wolves, but <laughs> yep, it's fine. But you did great. I'm happy so. to be here. I'm very happy and excited to be here. Oh, that's wonderful. So there are there any I'm questions? Pleased to have you. Um, so um, there is a question. Well, it's not quite a question. I don't know. Sharon, if you want to repeat that as a question in the chat box. You mentioned something about small purchase contracts, and but it's not a question. So um, Sharon on the, in the audience, if you would like to post that again. Um, next question is, who do we contact for career services at Towson? Um, I think there was a contract that you mentioned, a contact, sorry. Is there a contact for career services to supply, I guess, career services? Um, so I'm not aware of any career services that we need at the at this time, um, but if you'd like to just provide your information, you can send that over to me, that's fine. 
Um, we do have a vacancy in our department, the small business and MBE liaison would typically take care of that, but that is vacant. So you can send that information to me. Um, I did see in the chat that there were individuals asking about face masks and considering that I've only been here seven days and I was with UB, I know there is a need um, for face masks. So I will um, put the, the acting procurement director's information in the chat. Her name is Nina Baxter. Um, her email address is nbaxter at ubalt.edu. And I put in the chat so small business that are that provide face masks. If you could reach out to her because I know she has a need like at this time, but just make sure that you are a certified small business through uh, email and marketplace. Okay, great. Uh, another couple of questions. Do you have any set asides for hub zone businesses? And zone. can sales reps visit the campus? Uh, yes, sales reps can visit um, the campus. Um, we just ask that you uh, reach out to us and schedule something in advance. Okay. And, and the other question was hub zone. Um, I'm not aware of any set asides for for um, hub zones. I'm only aware of set asides for small business reserves, and then obviously um, we're required to um, have MBE participation, but none for hub zones that I'm aware of. Okay, great. All right, um, just scrolling through to see if there's anybody, any other questions that we haven't tackled yet. Is there a way for us to video chat with purchasers for A&E services? So uh, I didn't hear the question. The, is it, can we do a video chat with purchasers for A and E services? A video chat? Yeah, I guess like a like a Zoom. So um, I know some of the pre-proposal conferences have been done via the um, like Zoom um, at University of Baltimore, um, but I'm not really sure. Um, you know, as far as video chats here at Towson. Um, okay. All right. And if you could post for A and E, though, you actually need to go on site and and see the area. So I'm not sure how successful that will work out for a procurement like that. Okay. And could you type out um, Nina Baxter's email that you had mentioned yep. in the chat I'll box? Put it in there, but I will put it in there one more time. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Any set asides for veteran businesses? Uh, no, we do not have set asides for veterans as of right now. Okay. We do try to use veterans, but there's no um, set aside. Okay, wonderful. All right. Okay, well, we are now going to go on to our next speaker, and we can come back and do some more Q&A at the end for anybody who did not get a, an answer to that question. So we do appreciate your patience, um, but we, you know, we do still have some material to get through. Now, our last speaker is Roland Jones, who's a Director of Strategic Sourcing at the University of Maryland College Park. And before we started, we had some problems with having Roland's, uh, with hearing Roland's audio. So hopefully this is resolved. So Roland, um, if you can hear me, if you can try and unmute yourself. And we'll see if that, if we've been able to resolve that. Okay, Roland, I can see you, but can you say something? No, still can't hear you, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, yes, we can hear you yes. now. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, yes. wonderful. Um, are you able to share your screen so you can start your presentation? Yes, just Can everyone see the screen? Yes, we can. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good morning. Roland Jones, Director of Strategic Sourcing for the University of Maryland College Park. So a little overview about how to do business with the University of Maryland College Park. So this is a, a snapshot of the University of Maryland College Park, founded in 1856. 
I won't go through, you can read it for yourself. I think the most important thing about this are two things. 1,200, I'm sorry, 1,250 acre campus in College Park, Maryland, right next to the most powerful city in the world, Washington, DC. If you could think of the University of Maryland College Park and doing procurement and doing business with it, think of us as being a small city. So when you talk about the needs that we have to procure, we have virtually everything that you could imagine here as a need in the University of Maryland College Park. One aspect of what's stated on the screen I would like to emphasize though, the last two sentences in, a, in three missions of teaching scholarship and full engagement in our community, the state of Maryland and the world. We want to do business with companies that are based in Maryland, minority owned businesses, diverse businesses, companies across the world. We're looking for innovative, cutting edge solutions providing solutions and technology here at the university. So with that in mind, I know everyone asked the question, what do we have a need for? That gives you kind of a mindset of the needs that are here at the University of Maryland. Okay, so I've got some links here for you. What are the benefits of doing business with the University of Maryland? Multiple opportunities for goods and services. We have multiple opportunities. I would suggest to everyone that you go to our products and services page. The link is included here. It'll give you not only an overview of the goods and services that we buy, it will also give you the individuals that are responsible for procuring those goods and services. I am a big advocate for those of you that are on the call, and I know quite a few people because I've been around for uh, a few minutes here at the University of Maryland, I'm going into my fifth month, but when it comes to supplier diversity and procurement in the Washington DC area, I've been involved for about 30 years. So many people know me from many different other organizations and engagements that I've had. So I am always a big advocate and a champion of diverse businesses, minority owned businesses, small businesses. Look at the opportunities that not only the University of Maryland has, College Park, but also the other 12 institutions. That's one of the benefits. Oftentimes, we will ride contracts from other members of the university system of Maryland. So it's beneficial for you to do business and become familiar with all of the institutions within the university system. Executive Order 0101-2021-01, very, very important. I would suggest that you look that up also because that is an executive order that the governor, Governor Hogan, put in place to ensure that there is now increased seriousness of purpose about doing business with SBRs and MBEs. That's why you're here. And we want you to know that we are serious about doing business with you here at College Park and across the system of Maryland. Our overall responsibility is to ensure equitable treatment of all persons who deal with the university's procurement system. Cannot emphasize that enough. You will get your fair shake here at College Park. Responsible for achieving best overall values in procurements, procurements compliance, the state laws and regulations, minimizing liability. We have a fiduciary responsibility to do what's in the best interest of the university and the state of Maryland. These are your tax dollars that we are responsible for. Uh, as has been mentioned and thoroughly talked about in previous pre presentations, Register on EMMA. Again, if you don't do anything else, you have to register on EMMA. It is in your best interest. And not only register on it, but visit there frequently to see what opportunities are being presented. Then if you are a certifiable entity, get certified. If you're certified, stay certified. These last for a year. 
here again, it's in your best interest to be certified. I won't expound upon that any further. Best practices. I can't reiterate this enough. Visit Emma frequently on a daily basis if you can, because that's where the opportunities are going to be posted. Also, I would suggest that you talk to your cohorts and individuals that you have relationships with about doing partners, mergers, acquisitions, things of that nature that can put you in a stronger position to be able to respond to procurement opportunities. Become familiar with the guiding rules and regulations of doing procurement here in the state of Maryland. COMAR, the Maryland Procurement Manual, USM policies. Here again, I've given you some links that can be a benefit to you. It's often that people look to do business with particular entities, but don't really understand the rules and regulations that govern how you go about doing that. So hopefully this will be beneficial that you can go and have a point of reference about how to do business with university system and University of Maryland College Park. Some best practices. I hope this doesn't sound like I'm preaching. I hope I am teaching and, and enlightening individuals. Be responsive and responsible. You have to meet deadlines. If you submit something that's after the deadline, it will not be considered for any opportunity. So you have to be responsive, meet the deadlines. Read and understand all requirements. People kind of take this for granted, but I've been doing procurement for a very long time in various environments, corporate America, state and local government. Um, it goes without saying that sometimes we're in such a hurry to present the value that we can bring to people that we don't read the requirements completely. Please read and reread your requirements and the responses that you're putting forth to those requirements. Clear and concise responses. You want to accentuate the value that you can bring to any potential customer that you're trying to do business with. But you don't need to ramble on. You need to be clear and concise about what your responses are and the value that you can bring. Answer all questions thoroughly. Don't take for granted that if you think that's going to be the best answer, then make it the best answer, but be as thorough as you possibly can in providing information and responses on all solicitations and opportunities. Consider partnering with other firms. Ensure your team can meet all the resource requirements that are stated in all our solicitations. We will state the requirements that are necessary. Make sure that you can meet them, and if you can't, look to partner with others that can help you reach those goals. Cutting edge solutions at the right price. We're here to do business with you. We understand that you're here to do business too. We're not trying to squeeze you and put you out of business. We want you to provide us cutting edge solutions and we wanna pay a justifiable price for that. So we're looking for firm and good pricing, pricing that is going to be competitive. Innovations, innovations, innovations. Everybody's looking for innovations nowadays. And we're also looking for our suppliers to be partners with us. Here again, we're looking for long-term relationships. We're looking for you to bring value and we in turn will pay remuneration for that value. And here's my contact information. Sorry that it's not perfect, but I just wanted to do that to let you all know that we aren't perfect, but we're working on it. So I will take any questions. Okay, thank you, Roland. Um, yes, now is your opportunity to ask Roland your questions to see how you can do business with the University of Maryland College Park. So if I did miss your question for Roland earlier on in the chat box, um, please forgive me and please retype it. I'd appreciate that because uh, we do get a lot of messages throughout the presentation. Okay, question for Roland, any immediate cyber, me <laughs> cyber needs? There are always cyber needs. We have a very robust Department of Information Technology 
we have needs for solutions regarding accessibility, regarding privacy, regarding cyber needs. Um, I would again look on the products and services page and it will give you the individual that is responsible for information technology. But yes, there are a ton of needs for cyber on a daily basis. We're constantly looking for solutions. Okay, what about office supplies? We do have current contracts with two office supply providers. If you have something that is unique or special or technologically advanced that someone else is not doing, you can send me an email. And in your email, you should have a capability statement. You should have whatever that product or service is that you're trying to sell to us. I do respond to, to emails. I am much better responding to emails than I am phone calls because I can respond to an email at two o'clock in the morning, can't do so much with, with a phone call. So yes, we are very much interested in solutions that you have to provide. Okay, and do you always uh, try to give contracts to Maryland businesses? I want to say that we always try. We want to have a competitive situation and being a Maryland business just as being, we have requirements from a legal standpoint for MBEs and SBEs. When you say Maryland businesses, that could be outside of the realm of those two criteria. We're looking for competitive solutions and if the best possible solution comes from a Maryland business, then yes, we are anxious to do business with Maryland businesses as much as possible, but there is no preference for just being a Maryland business. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. If I have a service I think will benefit a department at UMD College Park, what is a good way to pitch that service? For example, proposal writing for the Department of Education. Okay, so we in procurement are responders. We respond to the needs of the individuals that have a need for goods and services here on the campus. So you could send that information again to me in an email. And I would also suggest to you that you make contact with someone at the uh, School of Education because there has to be a need. There's going there's going to be a need that has to be generated in order for there to be a solution that's, that has to be a problem that has been identified and an individual who has the technical wherewithal to be able to say whether that would be a good solution or not for a particular problem. Okay, thank you. Is your MBE set aside a goal or a requirement? It's a requirement. All right, and what is the best way to develop relationships with those in procurement? Um, this person is asking about technology specifically. Here again, take a look at the goods and services, products and services page, find out who those individuals are. There are two individuals at the present time and we have a procurement IT manager's position that's currently open. There are two individuals at the current moment that are dedicated to IT procurement. I would develop relationships with, with them and that will help perpetuate you in terms of getting access to information regarding the IT procurement needs uh, here at College Park. All right, um, do you have a list of upcoming contracts? At the moment, we do not have a comprehensive list. Here again, I reiterate, contact the individual that's responsible for those goods and services if you're looking for something in particular. And if you can't, can't get the response that you think is reasonable, you can always email me and I will get you a response. Thank you, Roland. We're really, really grilling you here. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so, 
So let's open up the Q and A then um, to for any for uh, any of the presenters that you've listened to today. The only person that is not on is Pamela from uh, University of Maryland Global Campus. She had to leave, but we still have Donna von Paris from University of Maryland Baltimore County, Jocelyn Johnson from Towson, and of course Roland at UMD in College Park. So now is your time. If you have any questions that perhaps you asked earlier and we didn't get around to answering, or if you want them, any of the presenters to um, clarify a point that, that, that they had uh, made earlier on, now is the time to do that. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm very interested in small purchases. How do we get engaged with the P card purchases? I am already an Emma, SBR certified, and I'm a master contractor. What are the next steps for me? And that could be for, is that for, that, that person didn't state who, who it was for, so anybody can jump in and, and tackle that one if, if, if you have any advice for that person. First of all, are they registered as an SBR? Yes, they, they are. are. Okay. Um, they can, she can say, I'll give you my email address and she can send me what she sells. Or we, if she could send it, uh, we could share it. Okay, Donna, do you want me to, do you want to post your email address in the, in the chat box? Yeah, that's or? what I was going to do. Okay, because a couple of other people have asked for that. Yeah, so I saw that. Great. <laughs> uh, next question. Is there a preferred capability statement format? Or is there a standard form when approaching universities? This is for anyone. I don't think there is a, there's no preferred format from my perspective. Just be, you have to figure out what's going to get across your message in the best possible way, essentially what you're trying to do. Obviously we need contact information on there and we, your certifications would be good also, but most importantly, what goods and services do you provide? Okay, and I'd like to add to what Roland said that um, with your capability statement, if you need help in, in creating that, our PTAR counselors are experts at that. So that's another thing that you can tackle in your counseling session with your PTAC counselor. Next question, are there matchmaking events at universities? I guess right now it would be digital if you do have any. Are there, do you have any planned, anything coming up? We are in the process of planning a matchmaker. Of course, we have to take into consideration whether it's in person or virtual, but we are, I'm working with our uh, associate vice president is Kimberly Watson to plan a matchmaker and not just with procurement, but also getting some of the individuals involved, the students and members of the university community that are, they obviously generate the needs. So we are planning something probably for the middle of 2022, if not later. And just to add to that, um, I also recommend that uh, SBRs, MBEs make connection uh, at all pre-proposal conferences with primes. So make those connections um, so that uh, you're familiar with who, who else is at the table, who the primes are uh, in, in, in a lot of cases. Um, and and start, start, start there as well, because that's also a great avenue um, to get your foot in the door, to get more experience. Um, and so I, I suggest you also do that. Also, always uh, attend those pre-proposal conferences, uh, again, as a way of getting information and making contact. Benita, would you like to identify yourself? Yes, since you told my first name, this is Benita Scott. Uh, I work very closely with Rowan at the University of Maryland College Park manager of commodities and services. Um, and so uh, I, I'm glad to be here and I've answered a couple of those questions there. Um, so as Roland was talking, I saw some of the questions and, and just uh, answered to assist. 
Thank you for that input, Benita. <laughs> okay, so uh, next question is, how does a small business find out who the prime contractors are for specific areas? Once again, I would say there, if there's a pre-bid conference, find out. Um, I would go to the pre-bid con uh, conference uh, meeting. And if it's, if it's an existing contract, they just need to reach out to the uh, institution's procurement department and they'll be able to provide them with that information. True. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a follow-up question for you, Jocelyn. Would I contact Jocelyn in, refer in reference to providing early childhood education training and consultation for their education department? Yes, as of right now, I would be the contact person. That's fine. Wonderful. Okay, well, it looks like that's that's uh, all the questions. Oh, okay, one more's come through. Is there a vendor list available of who the universities currently do business with? Unfortunately, I do not think that that list um, exists. All right. But okay. if they reach out to the prospective uh, institution, they may be able to provide them with that information okay. for, their, for their institution. All right, great. All right. I mean, we could, we could go on all day, really, with these <laughs> questions. <laughs> There's some great questions. We always have great questions with our PTAC audience. I love it. So, um, but obviously we have to start wrapping up and you do have a recording of this uh, or you will get access to a recording of this and you will have all the slide decks with the contact information. So please do follow up by emailing the contact in the slide deck with your follow-up uh, question to try and get your question answered. I'd like to thank all our presenters today. You did a fabulous job giving small business owners some great information on how to tap into the university's procurement. Um, and hopefully that will lead to some successful contracts for you. And I would like to thank all the audience as well for being so engaging, for always keeping us on our toes, asking great questions. Don't forget, your PTAC counselor is here to help guide you on all your procurement um, goals and issues. So please do get in contact with them. If you are not registered, please register on our website, mdptac.org. Thank you all. Thank you to the presenters. Thank you to the audience. And we hope to see you again soon at a future webinar. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Take care.